tonight on Code 2-0. We're heading to a shooting. It looks like a war zone down there. Alrighty, guys, we're uh, we're heading to a shooting. Uh, it's not looking good for our victim right now. It sounds like they're down in an alley, unconscious and not breathing. Okay, so we're trying to get. Okay, we're trying to get over to where this uh, where the shooting took place and it's in the area of Shirley and Van Owen and FD it sounds like is having a hard time locating it sounds like it's in the back like I said in the alley in an area where there's some garages or, or something like that so um, sorry we just kind of fell into this my microphone's all crazy right now I've got like a cable sticking out but uh, you can see the airship right ahead of us they're over they're looking for a suspect vehicle oh it's right here it's right here Six, seven. Okay, so we're going to go. calling back. They're stating their code. Same someone on Northwood Avenue, Owen Street. They're unable to locate. Yeah, because... Oh, the rear alley. Yeah, rear alley. Okay, so there's uh, FD. Let's see where FD ends up. But I think we're going to go up Shirley. Oh, actually, hang on. They might be going over to the Corbin Alley. That's where we want to be, is where... Well... There's an alley here, but we're, we're going to go to the RA side. That's where we're going to go. We're not going to go to the Shirley side. But the victim is down, I think, right behind that location right there. So we might we might go back over there. I'm not 100% sure. Um, let's... Uh, it's, it might be deep in the alley from what I'm what I'm gathering. So I don't want to... I don't want to put us in a bad spot where we're on the wrong side of it. But at the same time, we want to... Oh, please turn right. They are not blocking... They are not blocking, which is good. And I think we, it sounds like we might have a news chopper coming overhead as well. So let's get, uh, let's get into us into the correct location here. And I think it might be, I think it might be on the other side, but let's, we'll look down here and we'll see, we'll see how, how far, tell me how far down that RA is today. All the way at the other end. Okay, so we're going to go to the other side. 10 LP20, 10 LP20, side. That's fine by me. So, like I said, we are just kind of dropped into this. Uh, time of call is 10. Um, happened at about 10 o'clock. My notes here, we have a shooting. Male victim down. Suspect's a male middle, described as a male Middle Eastern in a white Nissan Sentra wearing a jumpsuit. Uh, not sure <laughs> not sure the specifics on that i can see where the ra is stopped and that is much closer to this side so i think we're in a we're in a good position here um so we'll shoot back we'll shoot back that direction and again we want to if if we get transport great um i they said our victim is unconscious not breathing and if that's the case then there will not be uh, there will not be transport on this, so let's take a look. There's a car over here looking down the alley. But we want to... Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna walk down there, maybe zoom in a little bit and see what we've see what we've got. So we're gonna we're gonna jump out here. I think this is gonna be our best bet. And 
it's a it's a ways down the alley. I don't know. We can we can try we can try walking down there until they tell us to uh, tell us to take off. Um, but I don't want to I don't want to get us like kicked out imme immediately. We want to we want to be able to do our job a little bit. And I think that's a news chopper. I I don't believe that's an LAPD airship. Take a little uh, little hike down here, just a little bit. Looks like they might be transporting and the RA is coming right right for us here. So That's weird, there was a Jeep. There was a Jeep behind that, uh, sitting in the alley. Did you see that Jeep when we rolled up? There's a Jeep sitting over there with one headlight and they, um, it looks like they followed the RA, so I'm not sure if they're related to the victim. I don't know, that was kinda, that was kinda weird. So, PD's following the, uh, they're following the RA. This unit right here, they're gonna be going to the hospital. All right, now it's a lot quieter. Hi. You are Hi. Oh, good. Did you guys hear shots? Uh, we heard a loud when we, because we didn't see it, like, I was on second floor and I heard something, like a, yeah. uh, like a loud something, and then all of a sudden I heard the sirens going like crazy, but this place is always hot. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they said, uh, they said there was a victim, uh, shot in the garage in the back. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, the garage is always, like, up and open, and uh, I, I always see... A lot of stuff going on. There. Gotcha. Okay. So not not uncommon. Not uncommon. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I appreciate it, guys. But yeah, they, they transported one victim that we know of. So that's all I know. All right. Wow. Detectives got here fast. Hello. Hi. Oh, with the news, man. Uh, shooting, one victim transported, unconscious, not breathing. Found in the garage. Oh. 
Uh, you know, uh, you would know better than I would. <laughs> And it's true, you know, if, if someone lives here, they know, and the, the other neighbor, you could hear him, they said, uh, hang on. You heard what the other neighbor said, he goes, yeah, that, that place is hot. There's always, there's always activity down there. And, you know, these people, uh, when they, when they live here, they know so much more about what goes on. Alrighty, we've got enough. We're gonna get it out. I saw a competition rolling up. So we're gonna get it in, get it up, get it in. Alrighty. So we don't, uh, ooh, the Taurus in black. Very nice. Um, we don't have too much information right now, but um, we're gonna make some calls and then we'll we'll probably do a follow-up as the as the night goes on figure out exactly Exactly what transpired with this whole thing Alrighty, let's uh, let's clear off. I'm gonna make some calls and we'll uh, we'll be on to the next one stories that were uh, were covered tonight um, that Gabe uh, was at. We're going to go through a couple of them real quick. Uh, he had a hydrant crash in the mid-Wilshire area. That's pretty... Not a huge hydrant. We've had some bigger ones. Alex, it's going to be mid-Wilshire hydrant crash. Uh, LAPD Wilshire units and LAFD responded to reports of a crash involving a, involving a van and a fire hydrant. Not a hit and run, but uh, definitely a visual scene. Let's take a look at Gabe's hydrant crash down on Crenshaw and Olympic. Let's take a look at that. So not again. We've had a bunch of hydrant crashes here on Code Two Zero. That one's a, I would say like a mid, mid to lower level, mid to level hydrant crash. But it's not a uh, not a massive, not a massive crash, obviously, um, and not a hit and run as far as I'm aware. So uh, the really interesting one uh, tonight, which is just it looks like a war zone down there. I, I don't know the the specific certs on this, but. From what we have right now, it's uh, LAPD Newton Division, it looks like. Uh, actually, Alex, if you want to, let's go to the tape. It's a crazy story. Downtown LA, 10 vehicle crash chaos. I mean, that's the best way to describe it. Gabe nailed it with that one. LAPD Newton officers received multiple reports of a solo vehicle rollover at Griffith, just north of Washington Boulevard. CHP Central LA looks like arrived on scene first and came across at least 10 vehicles involved in the collision. It's unknown at this time just because of how chaotic that scene is which vehicles were occupied and which uh, vehicles were parked at least one person was taken to a local area hospital it looks like stable condition uh and then a man was also taken into custody at the scene as well but this it looks like it's involving a tow truck that's overturned you can see this shot of the tow truck um and just 10 vehicles damaged i mean what a what a chaotic uh what a chaotic scene here in uh lap's newton era division um yeah, wow, what a what a wild, wild incident here. Griffith and Washington. Not to mention tonight we've had, you know, this 10 freeway fire thing has been very topical for us here in LA and Gabe has done a, an, an immaculate job at covering the overnight fires. We've had, gosh, I, I'm looking at the fires here. You had just a small sampling. He's got three on this night. And then last night, I think he had four. Let me check here just to double check. And Alex, I'll give you the slugs. No, it's three and three. It's three and three. Ooh. Correction. Yeah. So, Alex, if you want to play, uh, just to give you an idea, because we were talking about um, the fire that we had under the 10 that damaged the 10 freeway just south of downtown Los Angeles here. Um, that was a huge fire. Massive, massive pallet yard fire under the freeway. Damages the concrete. Freeway shut down. Huge mess. But 
they were saying it was arson. There's a lot, there's a lot of um, speculation, and I, I don't want to call it misinformation, but maybe misdirected information, possibly. Um, it's it's really interesting to see in a night, and you guys see it too, and we're driving around, how many fires do we see just cruising around the city? Gabe went and found every night, I think they have like six or seven, maybe even more. He filmed three uh, on the 15th, downtown LA overnight freeway fires. Uh, Alex, if you want to just run that while we're uh, talking about it. That was two nights ago, or no, sorry, last night. And then tonight we had even more. Uh, you know, we've got three of these fires, uh, one at 16th Street, 1000 East 16th, one at 8, uh, 850 East 16th, another one at uh, on West 18th and Olive. All of those fires that you're seeing right now are in the area of where that fire occurred, where the big fire occurred. So we see these constantly in the city. So to say that it's arson, the cause is, is really, it doesn't matter. It could be, you know, someone left a, a warming fire unattended, somebody has a uh, ill intent and it is arson, or someone falls asleep with a fire. Whatever, whatever the, the cause is, the real issue, and Gabe's calling me now, I've, I've mentioned his name three times and summoned him. Um, so whatever the whatever the cause, the initial cause is, the real problem is that we have all of this flammable material. So w the pallet yard, of course, that was storage. They're storing pallets under the freeway, which clearly not a good idea. But you have flammable material under the freeway, and that's really the crux of the issue. And then you have all of these unattended fires, again, whether it be arson or lack of attentiveness, you have all of these fires surrounding that flammable material. That's really what the the, the cause and, and the kind of the powder keg situation is pretty much on the entire tent. So Gabe did an incredible job and, and really kind of showed clearly that this is not an isolated thing. This is a nightly thing. We just don't cover it because small fires like that are not normally newsworthy. Now, of course, they are. But um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Uh, actually, there's some footage. There's another example of, of all that stuff burning under there. Alex, there's some old older footage. It's archive footage. We had a uh, uh, tanker. It uh, wasn't a tanker. It was a big rig. It was in the rain. It was a couple of years ago. I'll have to find it for you. It was a tanker truck. I keep saying tanker truck because of the fuel tanks on the truck, but it was just an 18-wheeler on the 10 freeway around that area. It was in the rain, was involved in an accident, actually came off the side of the freeway. All the diesel fuel fell down, poured out of the tanks down onto the on below the 10 freeway and then caught fire. And there was a bunch of buildings and cars on fire because, again, they store things down there. So, um, we'll, uh, Alex, let me find that archive footage. I'll get it to you and, and let's uh, let's take a look at what that looks like because that's, that's a similar similar situation where you have an incendiary uh, start and then you have all of that combustible material being stored underneath the freeway. So let's take a look at that. We're in a kind of a random <laughs> parking lot. We're not in the best spot, but it is pretty dark to the west from where we're sitting. There's some lights to the right here, but I'm hoping they don't uh, affect the shot too much. Um, we're in a random parking lot here off of Laurel Canyon and Victory. We're facing the west. And as far as I'm aware, there is a rocket launch out of Vandenberg uh, to the west, which is that way. Uh, Gabe's set up and he's going to be capturing it over downtown which is pretty cool um i think it's a spacex uh, launch i'm not a hundred percent sure but we are we are ready for it we are here that we've got dark skies over this direction and we're checking i'm gonna see if how do i yeah i'm gonna find uh Let's see here. I'm on Twitter looking for. Hey, 
Hey brother, what time is the launch? We might have a little bit of time here to get a better spot, but... Uh, 2.30. Oh, 2.30. Oh, okay, we have time. All right, so let's... Uh, I thought I thought it was going at 2.10. Okay, copy that. I'm gonna see if I can get a spot where I can see it from up here. And then we'll uh, we'll drop over to your video. Your always beautiful rocket launch footage. Um, can you do me a favor and just give everyone a rundown on what the uh, on what the rocket is? Is it SpaceX or what is it? Gable tell us. Yeah, it's just a uh, it's just a routine uh, SpaceX uh, Starlink launch out of the Vandenberg okay. Air Force Base. Routine. Um, I typically uh, shoot them when I'm down in Ventura because I'm geographically a lot closer and uh, actually a lot closer to the launch vehicle in the sky, and I can I can get some good shots of it from behind. But uh, in LA, it's a little bit trickier. You got city lights. You've got mountains in the way and you got to figure out where exactly it's going to come from over the horizon and it's a lot of uh, trial and error out here that's for sure but you've been uh, perfecting it pretty beautifully so all right we're excited to see the shot um thank you for the uh, information and we'll uh we'll try and get a, a visual on it here from the valley and look into the west but uh we'll probably end up cutting to your shot because it'll be a little better <laughs> a little better than ours so I'll, I'm, I'm heading up to uh, Sherman. So we'll, now that we've got a little more time, because it's set for, we have 15 minutes, we're gonna head up to Sherman Way. I think is gonna be our best spot here to look to the west across the valley, which is pretty cool. We're getting on it uh, at Victory. So we're, we're, uh, we're pretty close. But um, yeah, I, you just wanna get up a little bit higher just so you can see it as it's coming up over the, over the mountains. To our west but yeah they usually launch out of vandenberg we've seen a bunch of them and gabe uh usually waits and gets the the satellite train as it as it travels around which is pretty cool but uh yeah it's a it's a neat thing to see um bridge but i know that hollenbeck's gonna roll up at me <laughs> yeah the most he's right moment. that's right so it's pretty cool to see. Um, I have a couple friends who have been using the, st yeah, the stadium demolition, and as soon as the demolition starts, the bus uh, pulls up. Okay. So I have some friends who have used the Starlink internet. It seems to be okay for what it is right now. I think once it, the system is built up, I think it'll it'll work a little bit better. Um, but it's it's a great idea, and it pretty much connects the whole world online, which is pretty incredible no matter where you go you have internet which is which is great um, especially considering when I started in the industry there was uh, those types of systems didn't exist at all <laughs> there was no even internet in the car was like a was a crazy thing so uh, on the side uh, about 200 feet from the fourth street bridge Copy that. Okay, so Gabe's setting up on the 4th Street Bridge. He's trying to get the downtown skyline in the background, which is really cool. I'm, I'm excited. His footage is always gorgeous, too. He shoots it um, very specifically to make it look as stable and as clean and crisp as possible. And it's beautifully clear out tonight. We had incredibly high winds today. We had, like, uh, I want to say, what, 30 mile, 20, 30 mile an hour gusts uh, this afternoon with like a consistent 10 mile an hour wind uh, supporting that. So super, super windy all day today. And that wind uh, has cleared out all of the smog and now it's really clear. So <laughs> we should get a really beautiful shot of the launch. And uh, I just wish it was a little earlier, like in the morning or later at night, because when they launch, uh, as just after the sunset or just before the sunrise, you get these beautiful plumes of gases up in the uh, in the upper atmosphere, and it's really, really beautiful stuff. So, I wish that was the conditions right now, but the uh, the rocket launch isn't up to me when they go. That's not my <laughs> that's not my call. <laughs> so, um, yeah. We'll, uh, we're just thankful that we get to witness it at all. So it is far though, they're coming out of Vandenberg. If you look on the map, Vandenberg is really far to the west, up the coast, and uh, yeah, that's where they launch them. So it is cool that we get to see them coming up over downtown. 
Um, let's head up north, see if we can get a shot. I don't want to go maybe all the way to Porter, but we'll wherever we come back online here, we'll be in the right spot. So we'll see you there. Alrighty, we've repositioned here. We're now on the north side of the valley. We're up at Rinaldi um, and Reseda off the 118. We were just talking about it. There isn't really a great spot for us to look directly to Vandenberg unless we head over to maybe like up in Burbank, maybe up in the residentials up there and the mountains up there. We, you know, we should find a spot really. We should go up there and find a spot that looks to the west and, uh, and where you can see the, the rocket launches, which is really cool. But our eyes are to the west. We're waiting, it's 2.30. Any second here, we should be seeing the Falcon rocket coming up with the Starlink, and you can feel the car moving. It is incredibly windy here. I'm assuming the conditions over at the launch pad are going to be better than the conditions that we're, that we're experiencing here in the San Fernando Valley. Again, the Santa Ana winds have been a huge uh, deal for us. Uh, as of, what, the last couple weeks, they've started to pick up really. Fire season is a, is a 365 day a year thing for us and the, and the Santa Ana's really drive that big time. So uh, with those winds starting up, we're definitely a little on edge for brush fire season here, which does run much later in the year than it does uh, elsewhere. But our eyes are trained to the west and we are standing by waiting for the rocket, which very well could get scrubbed. That's another thing too. It could get, uh, they could cancel it. And we'll hear, I'm sure we'll hear from Gabe if they cancel it, but it's 2.31. Usually we're seeing something by now, but I am not. Yeah, we'll keep looking toward, keep looking toward Vandenberg and hopefully we, uh, hopefully we see it. Oh, there it is. Tay, great eye. Tay got it. Let's look at the tail coming off that. That's beautiful. You'll this damn street light's in the way, but... Here, Tay, the tree. Come here. Where is it? There it is. Just to the... Ah, I can't see. Yeah, it'll, it'll, you can hear it. It'll move to the left of the street light. There you go. Hang on. It's right in the middle. Stop. There it is. Can you see it? It's so little from here. <laughs> that was beautiful. Good eye with the streak, Tay. That was great. So while we're out here freezing in the wind, looking at this little dot going up, let's uh, let's cut over to Gabe's footage and see what see what he said. Wow, look at that! He's getting some beautiful stuff tonight. Let's take a look at Gabe's footage. That is just a beautiful orange tail coming off of it. And I don't know if we're I don't think that's second stage yet. I don't think it's separated yet. Uh, maybe I'm not sure. We we kind of lost it behind the trees, but let's go over to Gabe's footage and see what uh, what that looks like through his lens. What a beautiful thing. Uh, all right, so back down here at, on Earth, uh, you can see the winds are going nuts out here. Uh, we're gonna go hunt some wind, do some wind footage, do some weather footage, let's do that.
Alrighty, we're just down the street. We have a shooting with one victim down. Um, I believe they are conscious and breathing at this point. They were shot in a park. Uh, it's gonna be the Reseda Recreation Center. Reseda and Kittredge, between Victory and Kittredge. Units are there already with our victim. Uh, they're just up the street. We're about less than 30 seconds out. So we're gonna, when we get the green, we will go up there and see what's going on. But yeah, as of right now, just one victim. Suspects were last seen fleeing the park. Pretty big park, actually. It's, uh, I'm looking diagonal here. It goes pretty deep. There's some some heavy, uh, heavy trees also. So a little difficult for the airship to take a look. But either way, we're here. And they are out with the victim. And they already parked the opposite direction, which is fine. Yeah, they're over by the tree over there. Okay, this uh, this actually works out for us pretty well here. Perfect. Oh, this lady in the street about to get run over. All right. So it sounds like uh, an argument led to a shooting. Our victim was shot in the leg, it appears. Um, we'll talk with these guys and see what they uh, what they think, but it looks like our looks like our victim is going to be okay. Always a good thing. I'm overhearing what the officers are saying and, and it sounds like just a random shooting. Like the suspects just walk up to him and shot him in the park. There's always two sides of the story and then somewhere in the middle is the truth, so we'll see. I'm sure there's I'm sure there's more to it. It is. <clears throat> Alrighty, so once they, uh, once they transport, we'll get that, and then we will be on to the next one. Um, so, uh, LA <laughs> LAFD just rolled up on a, a person that was sitting in the middle of the roadway here, and they, uh, they woke them up, they went through the light, and then they just crashed. They almost took out the hydrant. It's that Mercedes right there with the blinker on it. And you know what? Yeah, they're asking for LAPD. Let's, uh, I'm gonna move over here just in case they try to keep, uh, keep going. 
They're not going to back up. They always try to go forward. If they back up, I'll go around them. But they're asking for an ETA for LAPD. They've got someone in that car. If they can get to the keys and get the thing shut off, then great. But that's a pretty, uh, pretty sketchy... They just, they just crap. We, we're watching them, and they just oh, there they go. Okay, if he can if he can get to the keys, then everything's everything's fine. But wow, lucky they didn't hit anybody. Lucky the light wasn't red. Because they oh, they popped the hydrant. Barely, barely. They woke him up, and they. They woke him up and they they were basic they basically sleeping. Uh, it's way faster than we thought. Um, so they they were sleeping, probably drunk. FD woke him up and then they just drove and uh, doinked the the hydrant and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. He's got his foot on the brake. It looks like and. I assume they're trying to get to the key. That was ridiculous. The car just took off. Go for 860. It's 860. That's who's talking on the radio right now. Was this your fire hydrant related to your incident or is this separate? Yeah, it's related. It was related to our incident. Yeah. They must have grabbed the key just now. I'm sure this person is totally tossed. They're walking away, so they must have. Oh yeah, the lights are off. They got the. They got the. Uh, the key. Well, I mean, it's a DUI. It's a DUI crash. He's got his uh, axe for some reason. What's that person look like in there? Passed out. I can't. Tell. You can't even see him, huh? So, uh, uh, driver out of the vehicle, and driver appears to have fled on. Uh, oh, he's already—he's trying to get the. Uh, he's trying to get the. Uh, the cover. They're trying to shut down the hydrant. That was wild, Tay. That was. <laughs> they just took. They just drove and smacked into the curb. Well, I'm glad they're okay, relatively. Again, we talk about it a lot here on Code 20. Do not drink and drive, or you end up like this person crashing their Mercedes into a fire hydrant, and then um, LAPD is going to come out, and they're going to take them to jail. So, not great, but yeah, they've got, uh, they got the RA over there, and it looks like they're going to try to get the... Uh, the hydrant opened up or the uh, shutoff valve opened up which is good that's good but yeah what a we're just talking about it too uh, they usually they wake them up and they take off and they do something so it's usually better to just kind of sit tight and wait for PD to show up but uh, yeah DUI driver super super scary situation for everybody involved but luckily that one I couldn't believe it. I just saw him going and they just right into the right into the curb and the hydrant so it is what it is. Um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll clear off of this, but yeah, don't. Uh, moral of the story: don't drink and drive. Don't do. Don't do dumb things like that. Hi, ma'am. I'm here at uh, Flower and Seventh. You've got a possible DUI driver asleep at the wheel on Flower uh, at the intersection on Seventh. Looks like a male. Middle Eastern, possibly. This guy's drunk. He might have hit. Uh, he might have hit somebody, also, because you can see. You can see there's damage to the side of the car. I don't want to walk in front of the car in case he takes off, but we'll stand by for. Uh, we'll stand by for uh, PD.
guys. I talked to the guys over here. They said he's been passed out before we got here. But I mean, I don't think it's a medical thing. That's why I didn't request FD. I think he's just, I think it's just DUI. They didn't come, the fire department? No, they didn't. They called us. Oh, they didn't? Yeah. Oh, weird. Yeah, we didn't, uh, I didn't request FD. Maybe the other guys did. So, I don't know, single male driver. <laughs> I'm just worried he's gonna take off. Well, you're getting this, so, you're getting it. I was gonna get my camera, but. Hey, put your car in park and turn it off. So yeah, my, you know, I, I try not to get involved on stuff because I don't think it's really our job. Um, but there is there is a line when you get to a point where you're like, okay, this guy, he let's say he's like completely trashed, right? Like super super trashed. And we see this all the time, where you've got somebody who's uh, who's DUI, and. Uh, you get somebody who's DUI, and they end up uh, they end up doing that, coming off the brakes, and they fly through an intersection, and they end up killing somebody. And for me, you know, it doesn't it doesn't take a lot to get uh, PD out there. And if he's not listen, if he's not drunk, cool, he's not drunk. They cut him loose. He goes home. Everything's cool. But um, if he is, and he's driving around, falling asleep in intersections, I mean, you can you can kill somebody, and we see it day in and day out. That's one thing I have no tolerance for is drunk driving. So, drunk driving is no bueno in my book. If you drink, take an Uber, find friends, call a cab if they still exist. Um, you have so many options now, there's really no excuse for it. And uh, listen, I don't mind drinking. I mean, Friday night, I wanna sit back, watch a movie, eat and have a couple drinks, that's my prerogative but you won't catch me getting in a car, cruising around the city, and falling asleep at uh, Flower and 7. So. That's, my, uh, that's my opinion on it. And uh, yeah, the guy showed up quick. They uh, rolled a unit out, and the guy is off the street. Which again, if they test him and he's cool, then he's cool, they cut him loose. So no harm, no foul at that point. Heading over into uh, the Palms area. This is a uh, sounds like a residential fire. Um, they've got two. It's a two-story single-family dwelling with uh, smoke and fire showing from the second floor. That's what city's got. We are four minutes out. Probably about four minutes, and uh, city's really fast. So even with that, even with that type of size up, with smoke and fire showing, we're still still behind the ball because we're coming out of we're coming out of Hollywood on this call. So we're definitely behind, definitely behind where we would normally be on an incident like this. We'll see if we can make it. If it's pack rack conditions, or if we have victims then that extends the operation a little bit and then that gives us time, but as of right now, we are pretty far behind it. Player 360, two story, apartment over car park. Entrance is gonna be made off of Bravo. You have no exposure issues on any divisions, no hazards or exposures.
Jeez. I'm having a hard time with the radios over here. Not sure why uh, they're having such a hard time, but um, we just heard an updated size up. They're now saying heavy smoke and fire showing from the second floor. This could be an attic fire um, is the potential there when you have fire in the uh, floor just below where the attic space is and that could extend. Uh, if it does, then again, that will extend the operation slightly. But as of right now, we are still, even with the size up like that, we're still behind it. If we get flames, I'll be, I'll be surprised on this. It is pretty windy tonight, so. Roger that, 2901 is the address of we'll check in, 2903. Let me know if we have anything in that, 2903. Uh, next one. Yeah, Palm, Palm Grove. Okay. All right, the so land is 20 seconds. We need a person suspect there now, 12701, so he'll go over to finish the position. Uh, yeah, it looks like they're already getting. Looks like they're already getting water on. Make sure the adjacent units have uh, nobody in there. Let's make sure if there's any need to evacuate, we do that. Or I just check it two nine zero three. And I see from Light Force Nine. Did a quick three six. These are thirty four. Correct. This is a two unit apartment. I just got word from the neighbor stating there might be a 60 year old female Ooh. still inside. Oh, not good. Alright, we don't want to get stuck. I see from engine 34. We're with rescue 94 with the patient right now. Okay, so she's out. That's good. There's like nowhere to park over here. Let's go down. Let's go up to the next street. Alright, so they're with a six year old female. It sounds like she's okay. Yeah, we'll park over here on Ferndale. We also have engine 26. You have engine 94, engine 26 up on Division 2. Yeah, this is probably a better, better spot. Yeah, roger that. Wider, wider street. Still going hey, though. Back roof. We got one hole open now. We're gonna keep opening them up to give you more relief. Okay, so it's yeah, it's in one unit. They're calling a knockdown. Uh, I mean, we're here. We might as well, might as well get out and check, take a look. But, well. Uh, it's really smoky. Um, but it sounds like it sounds like they've got a handle on it. If we were further south, then occupants out. They're they're trying to get confirmation. If occupants are out, we're gonna we're gonna let it go. So let's confirm that the occupants are out. Confirm it. No. No medical. Engine 94, confirm the occupant. Engine 94, we have uh, one patient that was removed from the second floor. Let's continue to do other, uh, another search and make sure there's nobody else in there. <sighs> Let's take a look. 
because they're not giving they're not giving a condition. So let's see, sixty year old female. Uh, you know. Make sure she's okay, and then we'll get on out of here. clear um, battalions out here they just declared a knockdown we heard it on the radio comms in front of the structure I'm assuming that females with these guys out front so we're gonna let it go we're gonna get on to the next one but as of right now again it shows how quickly LAFD gets knockdowns on stuff like this I'll talk to you here before we get close to the guys cutting on the roof but unless you're unless you're that close to a, a, a response it's really really difficult to get uh, usable content so we'll be uh, on to the We're here in downtown LA. We heard a, a quick blurb about some type of tactical operation with uh, multiple suspects in custody. We got a car in the middle of the road. We're good. Okay. Uh, we have multiple suspects in custody. It's uh, it's an interesting situation because we also have the sheriff's department here with quite a few uh, transport vehicles. And you can see right here we've got all. Look at this. We got the sheriff's. Uh, there's like two transport vans. They've got a what looks like a technical support vehicle with a satellite uh, system on it, which is pretty intense. Um, there's also, gosh, probably six or seven sheriff's officers or deputies, I should say, with uh, with uh, gloves on, so they're ready to ready to receive these people. And then inside the building is LAPD's uh, D team, so it's some uh, some of the SWAT guys. Gabriel is here, and we're gonna pull areas. There's Gabe. He's here. He's on the sidewalk. We're going to roll up and see what he knows, what he has so far. And then we're going to probably have to talk with these guys and find out what's up. I might even have to make a few calls, but let's, uh, let's see what we got. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, the plates on the comms van are government plates. Oh, they are? Yeah. So that's not a uh, that's not a sheriff's it's support vehicle. Sheriff. And the two, Ooh. they're SWAT there, but then the two other guys, they're Thames. SCB? They're what? They're Thames, tactically less. Really? Yeah, from exactly. all, from LAFD. From Got it. Okay. Well, so it's so the so the guys in black, those aren't D team, those are Thames. Yeah, I think so. Interesting. Okay. Well, they're gonna bring them out here because the vans are here, right? Yeah. Let me, uh, I'm going to chat up the security officer over there, see if maybe they know what's going on. Or unless they're for this building. They're probably for this, right? Yeah. The Dolby Theater. Is it Dolby? No, what is that? Theater Center? I've never noticed this ever, this building. It's very cool. Um, so Gabe just informed me that the, um, well, you guys heard him. The, the people in there that look like LAPD D team, they train with LAPD SWAT, but they are, uh, they are tactical medics. So. I'm assuming they were expecting a gun battle on this, which is terrifying. So uh, they brought in these guys. They also have Sheriff's SEB, uh, which is their Special Enforcement Bureau guys uh, here. I don't know how many there are. Um, what I do know, though, is that this is a post office building. Um, I don't know what other offices are here or if there's apartments above it. Yeah, it's locked. 
I was going to say the post floor. office is okay. So that's ground floor, and then it, you're saying it's lofts above. Yeah. Okay. So in one of these lofts up here is uh, some not so good characters, uh, I'm assuming. But again, we're here. We've got uh, Gabe set up. They're going to bring him out because all the vans are here. So we'll get an idea. And then again, we we still have to talk with uh, we still have to talk with some of these people and find out what's going on. So I'll go around, start talking, and see what we can find. We'll check back in once we have an update. Gabe's grabbing, uh, grabbing those shots. I'm surprised that the van, of course, the timing, right? It's been sitting there the whole time, and once they bring them out, they try to block the, uh, block the shot. But uh, this is some pretty heavy stuff. We're gonna definitely end up talking with these guys and finding out what this is. Um, again, government plates on that vehicle to see LAPD's um, tactical medics working with sheriff's enforcement. Obviously, some pretty serious uh, Pretty serious guys. They just took it to custody. Again, hindsight always 2020 here. The information isn't always clear. We know what we know thus far. If you want the full story, always you have to check out keynews.tv under publication for the full full story. And a couple days ago, we did have a um, FBI uh, was working with a joint task force. They took a whole bunch of uh, uh, gang members into custody. Not sure what the what the reasons were. Possibly everything from violating parole to who knows what. But uh, we have some shots of that as well. Actually, uh, Alex, if you want to roll the footage from the the previous previous operation uh, here in downtown LA, that was uh, two days ago. Hey guys, real quick, what the local news, uh, well, you guys are, oh, you guys are City Fire. Oh, you're with the Tactical Medic guys. Oh, I thought you were LAPD, I'm sorry. Um, could you at least give us what, like, who's involved in this? This is an FBI sheriff's thing? Yeah, no. Nothing? Okay. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you guys, it's all good. So um, pretty interesting. That uh, the vehicle they have out here is pretty incredible, actually. The van with all the uh, all the all the cameras. Um, pretty interesting stuff. All the guys are jumping in vans and taking off. Um, those guys are with the LAFD tactical medic team. Um, they can't give us any information, and then they're already going to be transporting our uh, our suspects. We'll have to do a follow up. I'm I didn't see FBI guys here. No one, no one thinks says FBI. So, uh, for the time being, we're going to have to rely on our LAPD and LA County Sheriff's point of contact. We'll get some more information. We'll follow up. Um, but yeah, really seriously intense uh, response for whoever these guys were. Once we, once we get a press release, uh, we'll have more information. So, that's where we're at. We're a little bit in the dark on this, but uh, at least we're here for it. And Gabe got some some good images to tell the story once we know what that story is. So we'll leave it, uh, we'll leave it at that. On to the next one.
Alrighty, guys, that's going to wrap up this episode of Code 20. Again, thank you for spending your Friday nights right here on YouTube with us every Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We really enjoy the comments. I got to say, myself, the entire crew, huge thank you uh, from us directly, of course. But I do, I love the comments. You guys are, again, one of the best. Uh, best crews, best people to hang out with on my Friday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'll tell you that right now. Um, again, new episode every Friday. Uh, again, that's going to wrap it up for this night. We had a pretty kind of kind of mellow, kind of mellow night. Just kind of cruising, chilling. But again, thank you guys for spending this evening with us. Um, we'll be back again next week. If you are a member, of course, you have member exclusive content. You get episodes early. Uh, you get to hang out with us. Oh, Tesla is trying to come across the bow here. We're going to let him change lights. Um, again, members only content. Uh, you guys have access to that right now, right this second. So thank you guys for supporting us. Um, if you're a subscriber, again, thank you for subscribing and being here with us as well. If you missed the premiere, it's okay. You're still you're still here. You made it this far, and we uh, we thank you for that. We thank you for your support. Um, Again, thank you from the crew. Everyone here at Code 20, we really appreciate you guys. And we will see you on the next one.